All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna think about continuing with my white flowers. Um, one thing you'll see in a previous demo is how I approach this background area. And generally speaking, you want to paint your light objects that are in the foreground first before you get into darker colors and the background. However, for the purpose of this demo, it's somewhat helpful to see what happens when you're putting something that's deeper and more saturated up against the sharper foreground objects. So one, one last kind of bit of information that I think will, will help us a little bit is knowing that there's a ridge here of masking fluid, right? Masking fluid that blocks, almost creates a little bit of a, a barrier or a dam and protects the white of the flowers while I do all of this crazy stuff in the background, right? So sometimes when you've got like really large kind of light colored shapes, you could find it helpful to paint masking fluid along those edges so that when you're doing all of this stuff in the background up against them, you don't have to be super exact about moving up against the, you know, the specific shape of the flowers because you've paint, you've protected them, you've painted them out with your masking fluid. So I still have a little bit of that masking fluid here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually go ahead and take that out because this is the area that I want to paint now. So let me see if I can grab my eraser. And fortunately this eraser is pretty dirty, but I think I found a clean edge here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna remove that masking fluid from this place in my watercolor. And it's kind of been on there a while, so it's being a little bit stubborn. All right, and then what I'm gonna think about is because in my, in my picture, these flowers were up in front and they were sharp in focus, but these down here underneath were much further away, so there's much less of a sharp focus to them. So what I'm gonna think about doing is putting in a whole area of water in that section of, of the flowers, and then I'm gonna put the color and the wet into wet color on top of just the water, because I want the water to act as a vehicle for the paint that I put on there so that it has a softer kind of bled out effect, right? A little bit like what I did here, but this one, the difference here is that these are gonna be the kind of whites and grays of the foreground flower, right? Just not sharp and in focus like these. So I'm gonna take my, my slightly bigger round brush and just with water. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create an area of wash. And I, you notice that I'm kind of being somewhat specific here. I'm not painting all the way through the shape. And the reason is that right here, I have a green stem that I need to work around and that green stem is actually connected to the flowers up in the foreground, so I do want to keep that a little bit sharper. And so I'm just kind of using my water around it. And the areas that I'm using my water are really gonna allow me to, to bleed some of those white, the grays and the, the light colors of the flower together. And so working quickly while this is still wet, I'm going to take a little bit of the my umber, so kind of a dark brown. I'm going to add just a little bit of my ultramarine blue to it to kind of gray it out. So blue and brown together make a pretty nice kind of gray. And because I'm noticing that some of these flowers underneath have just a little bit of a kind of an earthy brown tan, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of yellow ochre. 
to put in there. So I've got kind of a, a neutral gray. And because I know that some of these flowers are in shadow, a little bit darker, I'm going to drop in some of the gray areas. But I've got just a little bit of water underneath what I'm painting, so that's going to allow those to be a little bit softer and to bleed out. And then I also noticed that over here on the left side, it starts to get a little bit more blue and cooler in temperature. And then kind of switches back to a more kind of brown. And what I'm doing is blotting my brush a little bit and running it along the edge of some of these shapes. Just to kind of create a little bit softer effect. And some of these are, you know, this is very soft and kind of bled out, but this one maybe is a little more distinct. And I think I'm going to add just a touch, touch more. right up underneath this flower that's in the front. So because I had some water underneath it, the the kind of grays that are moving in and out are kind of bleeding in to one another a little more. And that's why I want to that's what I want to do, right? So for this shape that's going to be here in the middle, that's going to be my green stem and I do want that to be nice and sharp and defined. So I'm going to definitely let these dry before I put before I put those greens in for for the stem, right? Now, if I were to continue, for example, painting the rest of my background, maybe maybe I'll do just an, another little strip of that. Maybe I'll do just a little section right here to show you that kind of basic technique of using wet in to wet in the background but keeping your foreground objects nice and sharp. So I have those same colors in my palette ready to go. And this time I'm actually going to switch to my flat brush just because this whole background shape I'm going to be able to cover pretty quickly. So a little bit of water in my big flat brush and I'm going to move that up against but I want to make sure that I'm stopping at the edge of those foreground sharply focused subjects All right and working quickly while that's still wet I'm going to use my bigger round brush I'm going to go to my ultramarine blue and I'm going to continue with that sky and the sky kind of stays really blue up here, really intensely blue. But then I also have those additional shapes of dark, dark tree trunks and branches that kind of cut through and move up against my flower shapes. And here's kind of one big, big dark tree trunk branch. And then I do have some areas that are kind of white, blotchy, I'm sure there are additional flowers and blossoms, right, that are in the background. And so I'm dropping these areas of blue and dark brown in my background spaces 
but I also want to keep in mind that my larger brush is at my disposal to soften those edges a little bit to let them bleed out. So a little bit of water in that big brush. So I'm kind of just, you know, doing what my, my, just the water that I put in at the beginning did, right? Just to kind of soften those transitions, let them work wet into wet. And if I were to keep going, right, there's another section down here that would look similar to what I'm to what I'm doing here. This one has a little more of the white of the, the blossoms in in the distance. But this is the kind of approach working wet into wet, you know, moving up against your sharply focused objects in the foreground with something that's very blurry that, you know, is very nondescript, but is just about kind of areas of color, right? So don't be too overwhelmed by all the stuff that you might notice in your background because you want to keep it simple, right, in those distant areas and keep that focus for those foreground things, right? Your, your plant, your flower, or whatever, whatever is happening up, up front. <laughs> 